Cauliflower, it's the superhero of vegetables. It's power shape-shifting. You need a substitute for any recipe, especially a carb-loving one, cauliflower is there. You want some super crazy, powerful health benefits? Cauliflower is there. You fell on the floor and scraped your knee? Just rub some cauliflower on it. Why? I, I don't know, it could work. Hey everyone, Mark here and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're gonna make a cauliflower bake with pancetta and a velvety cheese sauce. And yeah, this cauliflower has a cape. Fly, baby, fly. Dice up 120 grams of pancetta. You can use bacon as a substitute. This is gonna go great with the cauliflower. I just love pancetta. Once done, set aside. No, this is not an orange I'm about to grate. This is smoked mozzarella. To be honest, I'm not too crazy eating it like this, but when it's melted, it just hits different. It's awesome. I'm coarsely grating about 75 grams. And then coarsely grate Asiago cheese, but because it's crumbling on me, I'm just gonna cut it up into small pieces. I'm going for another 75 grams here. Finally chop up half of a small to medium size sweet onion and set aside. And then finally chop up two to three cloves of garlic and finally chop up about three tablespoons of fresh chives. Now we can start cooking. In a pan on medium to high heat, drizzle about a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, and then add your pancetta. As it starts to cook and the fat renders out, we're gonna add our onion and continue to cook. When the onion starts to cook and get some color, we're gonna add in our garlic and finish cooking. You can season with salt and freshly cracked pepper, depending on how salty the pancetta you buy is. Once done, just set aside. Okay, so let's remove any capes that your cauliflower may have. I picked out about a two and a half pound cauliflower for this recipe. Let's break it up into florets and make them into bite-sized chunks. Once done, place the florets in a bowl and add a drizzle of extra virgin olive oil and season with salt and freshly cracked pepper. I'm also gonna add some chili flakes for some heat. Then mix to incorporate everything and place on a baking sheet with lined paper. I crumple up the parchment paper to help prevent it from rolling up on me. Place your cauliflower florets out onto the baking sheet and space them out so that they have room to roast and not steam. We want to roast the cauliflower. This is a great way to cook it rather than adding too much moisture that can result in watery cauliflower florets. If you do decide to steam or boil, just make sure to place the florets in a cloth and wring out any extra moisture. And now place in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes at 450 degrees. Once done, just leave and set aside. Time for the bechamel or bechamella. This is a pretty foolproof way for no lumps and I have to thank Christine Cushing for this method. Start by melting equal parts butter and flour. I have five tablespoons of butter and a quarter cup of all purpose flour. This is for our roux. Once the butter has fully melted, add the flour and with a whisk, incorporate everything to create a smooth texture. Cook for about five to six minutes, cooking that flour taste out or until you see a nice golden color you're gonna to start to smell like someone is baking like a, a pie crust. That's when you know that you're at a good point. Now remove the pot from the heat and add a little bit of cold milk, a little more than I did. Using cold milk allows you to slow the rate at which those starch granules thicken, which will help with no lumps. I've seen this done with warm milk, hot milk, and there are two sides to what is best. I'm not gonna go on and on here. I just want a bechamel I can easily make at home with no lumps and this method works. You're gonna to start to see these clusters of dough-like texture, but don't worry. At this point, you can add the rest of the milk and bring to a simmer. And after about eight to 10 minutes stirring frequently, you can see no lumps and it coats my spoon nicely. Let's season with salt and freshly grated nutmeg. Give it a stir and now add in our grated cheese. And stir until all the cheese has melted. And then we're gonna add in our pancetta mixture and mix to incorporate everything. Place the cauliflower in a big bowl and add two tablespoons of the fresh chives. And then pour in that cheese mixture and fold everything together to make sure all the cauliflower bits are all coated. And then transfer to a baking dish, spread it all out, top with as much Reggie, Parmigiano Reggiano, as you like, a little drizzle of extra virgin olive oil for good measure, and then place in the oven at 425 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes until golden and bubbly. You can place under the broiler for a couple minutes after if you wanna get it more crispy. And once it's done, it looks beautiful. Garnish with the remaining chives and let's eat. I mean, <laughs> the cauliflower is healthy.
It's super rich, but it's delicious. The cauliflower flavor is there. You get the saltiness from the pancetta. The combination of Asiago and the smoky mozzarella. Oh, it's, it's really good. So I hope you give this a go. And as always, the full recipe is in the description below. Please like and comment. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, ciao.